How y'all doing this morning? Hope everybody having a very good morning. Hope everybody. I don't even want to say safe because no one's really safe. Um, I'm gonna say first. But yeah, I hope everybody's having a good morning. Hope everybody's having a good time. Hope everybody everybody's doing good. Um, first and most foremost, let's get down to it. If you or anyone inside of this viewing is going to be offended by a few things that I'm going to say, feel free to leave. Do not stay here and let me defend you and abuse my scope to get my shit blocked. It's not worth it. There's bigger things in the world that you should be worried about and worried about than staying here listening to someone offend you. Uh, with that being said, thank you all for coming to the Daylight Show. Lights, cameras, action. Bam, 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 bam. Daylight, daylight. Daylight, daylight. Daylight, daylight. Bam, 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 bam. Daylight, daylight. Daylight, daylight. Daylight, daylight. Bam, 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 bam. Bam, 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 bam. Thank you all for coming to the Daylight Show. Quiet down, people. Quiet down, people. Quiet down. So today's topic is Trump. Donald Trump. Let me add something on to that. Donald Trump, a.k.a. the best and the realest president we have yet to have. And I think, oh, I think there's too many people bashing him. I think Donald Trump is getting way too much hate. And I don't see why. I personally don't see why. He's getting that much hate. One of my reasons why I say that is based on a simple fact. He is the realest president that we have yet to have. No, 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 no. He doesn't give the hate. He gives the truth. He's the realest president that we have yet to have. And I'm going to tell you guys why. Reason number one. Reason number one why Trump is the best president that we have ever had is single-handedly based on the simple fact that Trump knows he's just the president and the presidents don't really got shit to do with anything. Trump knows this. Trump knows I'm just a fucking president, dog. I'm just up here, dog. I don't really write half the shit I say. I don't really give a fuck. I already have everything I ever wanted. I don't give a fuck. He clearly knows that. He clearly knows the fucking world is sheep. You motherfuckers really think I call shots? On America, dog, I am a rich kid that grew up rich that knows absolutely fucking nothing about anything, dog. I fucking, I'm a fucking spoiled brat, dog. I know, I don't know anything about nothing. I'm just up here. And you think that I really know what the fuck to do with America? I'm just up here. Trump clearly knows this. Clearly. First reason, you got to understand that Trump understands that. The second reason, you got to understand this. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. Trump didn't troll his way into the White House. You're not understanding this. He never trolled his way into the White House. The White House itself is a house full of trolls. America is a troll. What you mean? 
he trolled it. No, they elected him into the troll sanctionary. Everyone in the the office is everyone, dog. This shit is one big troll. Everything. This is what y'all not understanding. Listen to you got to really listen to what's going on, dog. Everything about everything about everything political is all a joke. Everything about everything is all a fucking joke, dog. Everything. Everything about everything is all a joke. Everything. Everything. Obama was a joke. It was the funniest part about Obama. Let me tell you the funniest, funniest part about Obama. Funniest part. Niggas actually thought that he was going to make a difference. That was the funniest shit I ever witnessed in my entire life. Niggas thought that since we had a fucking black president, that it was going to be some type of difference. That was amazing to me. That was like literally amazing. Like it was so amazing to me, I I couldn't believe it. Like I was like, Yo, wait, what? What are you people talking about? <laughs> nigga, ah, we got a black president. Ah, oh my god, nigga, black people is free. Ah, niggas was fucking screaming out they fucking tongues, nigga, because we got a black president. Nigga, who elected him? Dear black people, I know we got a bunch of niggas on here, but I know we got a bunch of non-niggas on here. Dear black people, look, man, let, let me tell you niggas something, you stupid ass niggas. This shit is called the White House for a fucking reason. This is what you niggas got to understand. The shit is called the White House for a reason. And it's going to stay the White House for the rest of the fucking eternity. Come on, nigga. Bring your nigga ass in the White House and be a house nigga. Come on, Obama and your little black ass wife and your little dumb ass kids. Bring them on in here. Half of these motherfuckers ain't even really yours anyway. But bring them on in here to create this little perfect little family for the world. Because we know for a fact that if we would have elected another white man at this period of time, the people would have most definitely lost faith in the system. So we had to give them somebody that they can look up to for a couple of years and then go back to regularly scheduled programming. It was that simple. It was that simple. It was that simple. That simple. Everybody was hyped like the world was finna change. Everybody, all the black people was hyped. All the black people was hyped. Uh, Obama didn't do nothing. Uh, back to regular schedule program. But back to Trump. What you got to understand about Trump... What you got to understand about Trump is Trump is the first president that's really showing the world what the fuck it really is. See, a lot of people think Trump is racist. I don't think Trump is racist. I think Trump actually got in office to show the world how racist this world is. I don't think he's really racist. I think he's just like, yeah, fuck Kaepernick. And he's just showing you that how many people is agreeing with that. I don't think he really mean it. I don't think he, re I think he's just up here showing the world how racist this fucking piece of shit is. Fuck Trump. Fuck fucking Kaepernick, you son of a bitch. Yo, this is the president. Dog. Nigga, fuck Kaepernick, you son of a bitch. Everybody, fuck Kaepernick. Oh, fuck niggas. 
He's bringing out the worst. He's showing the world. Hey, all you little racist, little hick, little hickets. All you little racist, little hickets in the corner of the little boon hickets. Come on out. Yo, Trump is really bringing out all the little racist, little boom hickets. Come on out of there, little boom hickets. Come bring your little clan flag right on out of there. I know you're in there. Dog, all the little racist niggas is out now. They all visible. All the racist niggas is out now. You remember like when Obama was in office, all the racist niggas was just in the cut. Like, I'm going to just sit back because I don't really know what's going on. You feel me? But now that Trump is in president, all the racist niggas is out. Racist people are like now standing strong. Like, oh, shit. So I think Trump is like, hey, listen up. I think Trump had a meeting with a seek with some black niggas, right? I think Trump had a meeting with some secret black niggas, right? And I think Trump was like, look. No, I, I, this is what I think. Let me tell you what I think. I think Trump had a meeting with Kanye and a couple of more like Black Panther niggas, right? And I think Trump was like, all right, listen, I'm going to go on this fake ass racial rampage so y'all can see all the racial niggas. And then I'm going to give you all the house info. I think Trump is selling racist niggas house info. So I think he like, look, see them niggas over there? All them niggas racist, right? Here to go all their addresses. When it's time to ride out, kill all the niggas. I think Trump got an epic plan. Like, I think Trump really going to turn his back on all the white people. I believe that. <laughs> you know why? Trump really looked like a joker to me. He looked like he don't play by nobody's rules. Like, if you put some makeup on him, dog, he'll be a joker. Dog, Trump looked like he'll snitch on all the white people for some money. He looked like he'll give it all up. Like, what? 20 billion? Nigga, that go all the info right there. Shit, nigga, I'm going back to my hotel in Vegas. Nigga, my solid gold hotel. Nigga, I don't care about you, nigga. Trump looked like he'll give it all up, dog, for the right price. What? You niggas want to come in the White House in the back door for a hundred million? Shit, nigga, come in. Nigga, Trump look like he's going to snitch on everybody. But I fuck with Trump. I, I most definitely think he's the best president we had. Because he keeps it real. He keeps it real. He doesn't hold shit back. He doesn't get up there. Yes, you know, um, you know, I just want to make sure that everything is completely. That nigga get up there like, first of all, I'm going to fuck you. My wife is bad. Fuck Kaepernick. America's the best. Ah! Nigga, Trump be up there keeping it fucking 300, nigga. But I believe. I believe with all my heart. Trump has a bigger plan. He has a bigger plan. And what he is, is what Trump is doing. Trump is showing the world that racism still exists, bro. I don't think Trump is racist at all. I just think he's just, just showing the world. It's a lot of boom hickets out here. Hella boom hickets. Get them on out of there, you little boom hickets. You got to look at this. I want you to think about this. You got to really think about this. You can't even say the word illegal. Now, look, listen to this. The word illegal itself is created by the motherfuckers who are illegal. You can't even use the word illegal. You can't say that anyone is here illegal. Let's really think about this. Half of the fucking names of United States is Mexican.
California is Spanish. Los Angeles is Spanish. San Diego is Spanish. Dog. All of the streets in California are Spanish. El Segundo, Rosecrans, Alameda, all the streets are Spanish. Santa Monica, dog, Santa Clarita, Santa Barbara, dog, San Jose, dog, the list goes on, dog. The list goes on. Nigga, even Santa Claus is Mexican name. You're right. San Francisco. Nigga, this shit goes on. All right. San Antonio. Nigga, I don't even want to go. The list goes on, dog. But Pete. Pete. It ain't no such thing as illegal. Now, this goes to all the white people on here. This goes to all the low mind white people. I know there's a lot of stupid white people in the world. There's a lot of white people that are completely indoctrinated. So they, they just live by the simple standards of life. This goes to the white people in here. You have to really wake up, white people. And you really have to ask yourself as a white person, dog. White people are not even supposed to be in America. So how can you call anyone illegal? It's just something you just got to tell yourself as a white person. Like, dog, you're not even supposed to be here. Dog. Don't don't call no one illegal. Don't do that, dog. That's not right. Like, you, like, like you don't feel that in your heart. Like, as all right, look, look. As a Caucasian person and a person that fight for that side of life, you don't feel it in your heart that like your people have done bad things to the world. You don't feel that. No, 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 listen, let me just talk to my inner boon higgets. To all my white people in here, dog. You don't feel it in your heart like, yo, man, I'm not even going to lie. Like, yo, white people did some fucked up, man. And white people just fucked up shit, dog. You don't be feeling that? No, because, like, my man P. My man P a real dog. He a real white person, dog. So P be like, man, this shit fucked up, dog. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I be just thinking about all the shit that our people did to the world, dog. That shit fucked up. Like, you got a few white people like that that be like, man, this shit fucked up, dog. That be them white niggas that be outside protesting the Black Lives Matter shit. But Black Lives Matter, nigga, they matter. But no, like, shit fucked up. I think if you a real white person, look, if you a real nigga white person, because we got some we got some fake white people, but we got some real nigga white people. Like, I'm talking about real niggas. That, real niggas. Like, a few white niggas we can call my real niggas, dog. So what I'm saying is, if you were like a real one, like, let's go, dog, let's really think about it. If you a real white nigga right now, and you really feel some type of sympathy, nigga, you need to get in your little Boom Howard truck. Nigga, drive to Mexico, nigga. Find you a couple of little illegal niggas, dog, and bring them to the house, dog, and take care of them. Damn, I was about to kill myself. Oh, if you a real white nigga, dog. If you a real nigga white person, dog. Go to Mexico, dog. Scoop you up one of them Mexicans, dog, and take care of them, dog. Just, just give back to the world a little bit, dog. Don't be all stingy living in your seven-bedroom house and, and half of the people ain't even there. You feel me? Nigga, you know how many white niggas I know they got houses that don't even be at home? Nigga, I got homies that got dummy mansions. Them niggas don't never, niggas be on business trips around the world. Dog, so you just bought a $3.2 million mansion and you, nobody there, but you paying for niggas to clean up the house, but nobody there? Dog, let a few immigrants live there. Dog, damn. They ain't going to do nothing but continue to clean up. Damn, they ain't gonna do nothing but clean up. Might as well. See, you gotta understand, like, I'm like this. I just think like this. I feel, you know, if I was white, 
Like, this is what I would do if I was a white person. If I was a white person in this world, right? I would really spend my entire life making sure that everybody felt like the world wasn't fucked up. If I was white, that's what I would be out here doing. I would be out here like, yo, I'm a Caucasian man, but I must accept that our people have done numerous damage to multiple cultures in the world. Numerous. So I'm going to spend my life making sure that people don't feel that all white people is bad. It's nothing to do with color. Has a lot to do with color, dog. Don't don't say that it has nothing to do with color. It has a lot to do with color. A lot. Colors mean a lot in this world. Good morning. Colors mean a lot in this world. The title human means color. Hue. Hue means color. To be human means that you are a color of a human. A a color one type of colorful man. It is all about color. And different colors has different amenities to this world. Different colors will give you different amenities to this world. Now, racism has nothing to do with colors. People have aligned racism with colors, but racism has nothing to do with colors. Racism has something to do with a specific species trying to get to the top. Now, what you have to understand is there is a group of people that don't even belong in racism at all. You got to understand it. They call it the human race because there is another person in the race that is non-human. There is a lot of non-human niggas here. A lot. The human race is like the rat trap, dog. Well, let's put this little scenario in this world and make these little human niggas race for the top. It's a race. It has nothing to do with, like, like you got to really break down the words. You got to break down the words. Like, you got to do the etymology of the words. The race. It is a race, dog. A actual race. Everyone is racing to the top. But the top itself is the bottom. It's a race. And there's some people that live outside the rules of the, of the race. There's a lot of fucking beings that live outside the rules of the race. So we got to understand this. Now, the truth is. The truth is, the more they can keep the human race fighting each other, the more we'll never get to the finish line. The more they can keep the human race fighting each other, we'll never get to the finish line. So, you know, when you go down that rabbit hole, that scenario, you have to understand this. It's all by design. All right, let me break to you. Let me break. Let me let me break down the human race. Let me break down the human race. I'm gonna break it down, human race, for you right now. I'm gonna break it down completely. All right. From the day you are born, it is a race. This is what you have to understand. From the day you are born, it is a race. From the very first day that you come out of your dad nutsack, you are racing. You are racing against. 800 billion extra sperm cells. All of you niggas are racing to the egg. That is the very first start of the human race. And then, if you happen to make it to the egg, you won. You beat everybody else. You beat all the other sperm cells. You made it. You a winner. Right? That is the first level of the dream. Then you get inside of that earth. You got to think about it. 
sperm cells are like souls, right? And they're all souls and they're all making it out. They're all making it to the egg, which is if an egg is a circle, then it's technically another earth. So you make it inside that earth. Boom. You make it inside that planet. Right? Boom. So you make it inside that planet. Wham. Then you grow up inside your mom's stomach. All right. Hmm. Growing up, growing up, growing up, sitting metamorphosis, just like a fucking butterfly, cocoon, metamorphosis, boom, 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 boom. Then you come out in this world. The moment you come out in this world, you are in another race again. Yes, it says probably made by immigrants as soon as it cut on. But Pete, so when you come out, you come out of this, your mom pussy, and you in another race again. Race. From the beginning, you are in a race because now you're racing against not people. You're not racing against none of that. You're racing against time. Time. You only got a hundred years to do something and you only got a hundred years to achieve a specific goal. So then all the goals are created for you. School. School. Uh, school. Once you check in school, you check in school. You got school. You got school designing the entire race for you because now school is a race. You got tests. Everybody got tests in school. And then you got to beat out everybody else in your class. That's part of the race. Beating everyone in your class, making it to the graduation. Then them niggas graduate. Then the rest of the loser niggas don't graduate. Then they all fucked up mentally. Then you go to college. Then you got to do the race all over again. Then once you go to college, you racing to who is going to be the graduate from college. Oh, you got to do it all over again. Then after you graduate from college, then you get your job. Then you got to start your ass from the bottom of your job and work all the way back up. You in the race again. Then once you get that. Now, you quote unquote at the top of your race, retire. You retire and now. You got to sit the race. You got to sit the rest of the race out. After you retire, you just got to sit the rest of the race out till you die. Your game is over. It is a world full of ladders. That's all it is. Ladder, get to the top of the ladder, start over another ladder. Get to the top of the ladder, start over another ladder. Now, uh, before you know it, you start to tell yourself, I've been racing in a circle the whole time. I've actually never did anything. I've actually never did anything. Actually never did anything. Nothing. I've never did anything. Nothing. You tell yourself that. Years. I spent my entire life. Damn, I ain't even flew out nowhere. I ain't even went nowhere in my life. What the fuck? Damn, I'm 45 years old. What the fuck have I been doing all my life? Then that's when you start to realize, oh shit, the race got me. I thought I was running, but I was on a fucking a hamster wheel. I thought I was running, but I was on a fucking hamster wheel. And that's what it is. It's that simple. Hamster wheel. We are all on a hamster wheel. And it's when you when you realize that. When you really realize that from that perspective, you have to tell yourself this. You notice. You notice. Look, Pete, I want y'all to really look at this. I want y'all to understand how this world works. You notice when I start talking about the setup and the design of this race and the design of this world, you notice the troll bots start popping up, trying to distract y'all, you notice. So you see how I can just block them. I don't even have to touch my phone. I can just look at the screen and block them. I don't have to touch my phone at all because when you're there mentally, it's just certain things you can do. You got to understand the type of connections that we have with these phones. They call smartphones for a reason and they are algorithm aligned to our thinking process. It's that simple, but notice, 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 that's five pages in a row within seconds. That is a bot. That is someone designed to distract us from talking about what we talk about. That's how things work in this world. So 
I'll just continue to block it as soon as I see it. But Pete, understand that the race itself, the race itself is the problem. That is the problem because we are all racing towards imaginary goals. And the goals that we are racing towards will not help the overall scenario. What we should be racing for, what we should be racing for is people getting together and understanding that we are the power to this world. The people is the power. Now, there's one thing that we are supposed to be doing that no one knows. Now, when you understand sound. All right. So have you ever went to. Have you ever watched any like Japanese show or any anything like from, you know, any form of like karate movie or something where they make sounds out of the little bowls, like they hit the vibrational sounds out of the bowls. You know, you started like and you and, and the sounds can heal you. Specific sounds can heal you like someone can heal a cold with a specific sound. People don't know that. Like if you have a common cold, there are people, there are doctors that can heal that common cold with sound. A specific frequency can fucking heal you. Now, when you really think about this, I learned a valuable thing about slavery. I learned a valuable thing about slavery. And there's a secret inside of slavery that people don't really know. All right. Inside the slavery time in the slavery era. I've like, cause for example, you know, I, I've went to some places and did some heavy research studying on slavery. There have been slaves caught having rituals. There have been slaves caught having rituals to where the slaves was literally all singing a song together, right? They all sung some specific song together, right? All of them sung a specific song together and the chains melted off. Melted off. They had to be rechained. Oh, y'all laughing, huh? Y'all think this is a joke. Oh, y'all think this is a joke. Oh, so y'all think black magic is a joke. Y'all think chanting is a y'all think this is a joke. What up, Jane? Y'all y'all think this is a joke. Y'all don't understand what chanting does. Y'all don't understand what vibration does. Y'all don't understand if you chant a specific way, you can heat metal up easily. What y'all don't understand? You can play a specific sound to metal and it'll literally heat up. Y'all didn't know that? All right, so now we're going back to chi energy. A lot of people feel or realize what chi energy, but it's it's the rabbit hole goes deep. But look, more of the story is you ever watch these, you know, you ever watch these old slave movies where the slaves used to be in the field singing songs together? They have made us think that slaves were singing this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. No, that's not what the fuck they were singing. They were singing real enchanted songs. The most definitely bring shit, call shit, make shit. All type of shit was happening. It's a lot of history that we don't know that was happening inside the slaves ever. That's why we don't we don't really understand like witches. We don't understand like, you know, uh uh uh, uh witch doctors. We don't understand warlocks. Like all that shit is real, dog.
Black magic is most definitely real. So when you understand this type of stuff, you have to understand we're going back to unity. So if people look, 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 this is this is really if people. If people itself. If people. If people got together, look, I want you to think about this. If people, I know a lot about witches. We can talk about that after I say what I'm about to say right now. Because I'm actually a witch myself. But if people, if people got together and chanted a specific frequency at one time, the entire world, like let's talk about, let's say if it's 8 billion some people on the planet, and let's say if 7 billion people chanted something at the same time, a specific frequency, it would literally rid the earth of every form of cancer. Everyone who is not aligned will literally die. We as a people can fix the entire planet. Divide and conquer is one of the greatest tactics in the entire universe. Divide, conquer. Divide, conquer. Separate, conquer. Divide, conquer. We all divided from children. Now, I did a lot of fucking researching and then I actually studied for about four years and I, I went to, you know, a Shaolin monk temple and I was there for four years. And I learned a lot of things about the temple and I learned a lot of things when I was there. Um, meditation, frequency, that's all it's about. Meditation, frequency, it's simple. Now think, oh. us, us as human beings, we believe that guns is the only weapon. We believe guns and missiles and nuclear weapons is the only form of weapons that we should be afraid of. But there is a weapon. There is a weapon that is being used on us daily and we don't even hear it or see it. There is weapons that are being used on people daily. Sound. Sound. I don't give a fuck about no nuclear missile. Sound. S Look, hey, sister, my sister up top. We're going to get to the witches. We're going to get to my belief system. I got you. Chill. I'm not going to forget about you. Just hold on. I got you. Sound. All right. So some of y'all might be young. Look, some of y'all might be young. Some of y'all might literally be young, so you don't remember the older TVs. Now you remember the older TVs. You know, we, we got to go back to the older TVs, like before the plasma screens. All right. Let's go back to the, to the older TVs before the plasma screens. All right. Do you remember when you used to cut your TV on, you used to hear the weird... It was like a small, low buzz frequency. And when you used to touch the TV screen, it used to be staticky a little bit. Like you could feel like electricity coming off that motherfucker. Remember? Remember those days? Remember your mind should be like, cut that TV off when we go to sleep. You're not understanding all of this shit is encrypted frequencies. You're right, my G. You took that all of my you took that out of my mouth. But it's all frequencies. All this shit is frequencies. It's a low-level frequency being played to help with the programming. People don't understand this. So sound. Sound is most definitely one of the greatest weapons ever. Sound. Sound. It's all sound. Everything is sound-based. The weapons are sound-based. 
It's all frequency sound based. Do you understand how speakers are made? How many people know how speakers are made? I want you to really take time after this Periscope and get on YouTube and understand how speakers are made. Magnets. Magnets. Oh. Magnets to manipulate electricity to create a vibration. Magnets. Magnets. Two magnets on both sides to manipulate. Two magnets on both sides with a coil in the middle. Align both sides to both sides of the, the magnetics. Uh, you need uh, of something that vibrates in the middle to create this specific vibration. Dog, it's crazy. Magnets, dog. So you can't really tell me you ain't never opened up a speaker box and took the magnet off the back of a speaker. Man, you niggas must be young. Dog, we used to take the magnets off of speakers like all the time as children. You niggas must be young. Y'all must be some young niggas, dog. All y'all niggas listen to is iPhones all day, dog. And I, I thought we used to take the magnets off the speakers all the fucking time, dog. Cause y'all niggas got shit that y'all nigga, y'all niggas listen to in headphones all day, dog. Y'all niggas got beats by Dre and all type of stupid shit. But no, magnets, dog. So when you start to understand sound. You start to understand sound, you start to understand like, yo, weapons is sound. Sound is being used as one of the greatest weapons ever. So wait, let's go off topic for a second. I want to get to my, 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 my sister. You feel me? That asked the question about, you know, what I know about witches. Uh, I know a lot of things about witches, which is the first thing I've understood about witches. Now, if you add an S to which, it switches over. You add an S to which, it switches over the entire scenario. Which switches to the simple fact that we're talking about crystal balls. Now, when you process crystal balls, well, we're going back into crystals. We're going back to quartz crystals. We're going back to hematis. We're going back to all type of forms of crystals. Not only are we going back to forms of crystals, we're going back to the simple fact that every witch has put stuff in a pot. Notice this. Notice that all witches, quote unquote, via, via TV or via Halloween has a boiling pot. Notice this. Notice this, all witches via via every form of media has had a boiling pot. Notice that in every video, you always see the witches putting maximum leaves and all type of shit in the pot, right? You notice that. But peep, peep, they were never casting spells and they were never making magic do you know what magic potion is let me let me break some down to you. you know what magic potion is ayahuasca are you familiar with that do i have to say that again did y'all hear it did y'all catch it do i gotta say it again notice every time you watch a witch boil in the pot pay attention to the items that they are putting in the pot Oh, shit get deep, dog. Shit get deep. Words. Words. Understanding words. 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 Words are all frequency based my sister words are frequency based i am not actually saying words right now it is because my vocal box is vibrating a specific sound that you recognize as specific words that's it
It's because my vocal box is vibrating a specific energetic frequency. That's all it is. So we're going back to witches. You add an S to the witch, it switches over to the simple fact we're talking about crystal balls. Crystal ball switches over to the simple fact we're talking about forms of crystals. All witches' pots are all filled with all the things to create ayahuasca. What the hell are you looking at, sir? Create forms of ayahuasca. Now, understanding what ayahuasca is, DMT trip. Now think about this. Every time a witch has drunk magic potion, what the fuck has happened? Bitch went to all type of galactical scenarios. One thing you got to understand is witchcraft is most definitely real, real. And it's all sound based. It's all sound based. All of it is all sound based. Yeah, I understand that. Now on to my sister next question. She asked me what religious system wait, what was your question again, my sister? She asked me what religious what religion am I? Oh, uh, my religious affiliation. I don't know how to answer that. That's like a deep question. Alright. I'm a devil worshiper. I worship the devil. Yep, Lucifer, Satan. Yeah, I'm a devil worshiper. Yep. Worship the devil. Dear Heavenly Satan, I come to you in the name of Satan. Just, just say, bless me. With the magic to st to withstand fire, you feel me? Cause I know I'm coming down there in a couple of days. You feel me? So bless me with the ability to resist the burning in hell for eternity, dear heavenly Lucifer. See, y'all gotta understand something. You got to understand the valuable thing about myself. I believe that there's two sides to every story. I believe that there's two sides to every story. Now, I believe that this, I believe this with all my heart. I believe that we all run from Lucifer, but we've never got the time to talk to him and hear his side of the story. That's what I believe. So what I've been trying to do is I've been trying to find the devil so I can talk to him. I just want to talk. Like, I don't want to do, I just want to talk to him and ask him, you know, yo, dog, like, what really happened? He may not be bad as what we think he is. And one of the reasons why I say that is because, you know, I've been reading my Bible a lot. And, um, you know, the Bible says that God has killed millions of people and Lucifer only killed about 20. I've been reading the Bible. I think he killed about 10 to 20 people max, but God has killed billions. And then... In the Bible, it also say, it also say that the devil gave us the forbidden fruit, but the forbidden fruit was from the tree of knowledge. 
So at one point in time, we were stupid and God wanted us to be stupid and wanted us to stay stupid. But the devil actually snuck in the garden of Eden and gave us the fruit that made us smart. So there's some things that's not adding up to me. So what I'm saying is, these are things that I just want to ask the religious people. I'm not really religious, but I'm saying these are just things I want to ask, you know, religious people. That scenario. But now I'll let y'all know what I really am. I'm not a devil worshiper or I'm not a I'm not a Christian. I'm not a Muslim. I'm not an atheist. I'm not a uh, well, I'm not a Christian. I'm not a Muslim. I'm not an atheist. I'm not a Hindu. I'm not Buddhist. I'm not a, a Catholic. I'm not none of those. What I believe in is everything. No, I don't worship God. Why would you worship anybody? Don't worship nothing. You should worship your fucking self. Um, but what I do believe in, I do believe, what I do believe in is that we, all of us on here and everyone around the world, I do believe that we are God. We, and one of the reasons, and I take this from all religion because it makes perfectly sense. I believe that we are God based on the simple fact that every Bible states that God made us in his image. Now, we may, no, it doesn't say God made us look like God. It says God made us in his image, which means we are inside his image, like us together create the skin of God. So, when you times that by the simple fact that Bibles are written in allegory, that means it's a form of punchline. So when you break down the punchline itself, God body. Thank you. Thank you for, for, for throwing that in there. When you break it down itself, God body. We are God body. So then, No, no, no. I, we, we, you knew to look, look, my sister. You knew to my periscope, so we'll give you a little background. I have sat in this park and read every form of Bible scripture known to mankind from all forms of Bible, from the Quran, from the Hindu Bible, from the Sumerian tablets, from the motherfucking the he upset here in this park and read every form of fucking religious aspect. So I, I just want to, you know, I just want to break that down to you, you know, just because you kind of knew. So I want to break that down to you. But I, I've studied religion from every aspect around the entire world. And I've, I've calculated my belief system based on everything that I've studied, which led me to the belief system of understanding people. We are God us as a whole and we most definitely have specific god-like powers that have been locked away based on the scenarios and the situations that we live in so like for example we all we all have specific abilities we all like we all live in this world like X-Men, like we are all mutants, all of us. All of us are forms of mutants and we all have physical abilities that we can't unlock based on when we were vaccinated when we were kids, based on TV programming, based on indoctrination with specific languages, based on it. No, we all have specific abilities that we can utilize but they are all they are all muted based on the things that we eat based on chemtrailing based on uh uh uh, uh economic programming based it's so many little booby traps that has most definitely designed us not to be at our fullest potential of what we should be at. so what i'm saying is this What I'm saying is this, you know, the more we look at it from this, this 
situation, the more I start to study from a worldwide perspective on it, the more I start to study from a worldwide perspective, I start to really understand. We all, all of us, all of us possess forms of an abilities that we all can do and we can unlock them. All of us. Like I said, there's stuff in our water, there's stuff in our food, it's stuff in, it's so much stuff in everything that is all designed to dumb us down, all of us. Dog, I, I, I know B.O.B. personally. There's all stuff inside of all forms of all of this stuff that is, it's, it's, that is deep. It's deep. How deeply they got us. Very deep. Multi levels of traps. But what I'm saying is back to my belief system. Back to my belief system. I believe with all my heart. That there is a God. I believe that there is a God. But I do not believe that that God is good nor bad. That's what I believe. I don't believe God is good or bad. I don't believe he lives in the realm of good or bad. Good and bad is like something created in the human mind. A man who creates galactical explosions and shit does not really care about life or death. That's what I believe. I don't believe God is good nor bad. And I don't believe God exists. And I do believe God exists. Uh, First of all, we can't even process is God good or bad because we can't even use the word he because God is not even a person. God is not even a it. The God is not nothing. He's not nothing. It. He. See, see, we so programmed with calling God a he that we automatically think God has man like mentality. It. It, whatever the fuck it is, it does not even work. It does not even work like a person. It doesn't even work like a person. And that's something that we got to understand. It doesn't even have the mind state of a human being. But I do believe that human beings can reach that mind state. Now, I'm going to tell you what I believe God is. And I think we can all reach God level. I think. I think. If we all really got in tune with what are what we were and what we are then we would most definitely reach god level i think the movie lucy explained it all i think the movie lucy is one of the biggest movies in the entire world it's one of the best movies that i've ever watched ever lucy The more we unlock, the more we unlock, the more Lucy is more than Hollywood, it's the more we unlock. It explains it all. The more we unlock, the more we no longer need this this weak ass body that we live in. The body itself is the booby trap. It's the body. The body itself is the booby trap. The more we no longer need this body, the more we unlock our mentality, we no longer need this body. The body itself is the prison. Once you get into astral projection, then you start to really understand the body itself is the slave ship. 
How many of y'all are familiar with astral projection? How many of y'all have done astral projection before? The more you get into that, the more you start to understand. When you leave this weak ass vessel, when you leave this vessel and you be on the best trip of your fucking life, and then you start realizing the trip is over, then that shit starts sucking you back to the prison and you like, oh shit, I'm going back to the body. Fuck, I don't want to go, dog. That's when you realize this weak ass body is the prison. Now there's two ways to do it. Lucid dreaming is one way to do it. It's the start of it. Lucid dreaming is the start of it. Uh, the second step, if you don't want to do any form of drugs, if you like want to stay clean inside your body and you live with specific morals and you don't want to do any form of drugs, then you can do something called sensory deprivation. Big ups to everybody who tried sensory deprivation after I told them about it. You can do sensory deprivation. Find somewhere in your neighborhood and in your city where they have sensory deprivation tanks. And most definitely do the sensory deprivation take. It will literally take your mind to another galaxy. These are the steps to understanding what type of world we live in. And not only what type of world we live in, but what our brains is capable of doing. You got to really sensory deprivation. Sensory depth. Pervasion. Google it, find a place in your area, and it will most definitely change the way you see life. Now, you have to understand this. You have to understand this. The smartest person in the world is most definitely. Not even the smartest person in the world. The smartest person in the class. The smartest person in the class is most definitely the dumbest person in the world. You can graduate right now with a 4.0. A fucking 5.0 GPA and still be the dumbest nigga in the entire universe. Because the information that you have programmed with your head is not the information that's going to really help you as, as the real knowledge. So, all the knowledge that you're going to learn from the social side is knowledge that is going to help you live in the social economic side of the world. This knowledge is going to help you make more money. The knowledge that you learn from the school side is going to help you make more money. And the money is most definitely what's going to keep you more sleep. It's bigger than that. Sometimes it's not about money. Now, I'm going to tell y'all something. I never really understood crackheads. I never really understood crackheads and I never because like my father used to smoke crack, but then he stopped smoking crack. And like he just stopped like one like I thought he was addicted to crack. I thought he was it was over. And one week he just stopped smoking crack. He's like, no, nah, I was done. I just, you know, I just came back. No, he didn't go to rehab and do nothing. He just stopped. Like he didn't go to rehab, he didn't go to jail, he did nothing. The nigga was on the corner, laid out, and then the next fucking week, nigga, the nigga was back at the house, regular. So, that always tripped me out over the years. Oh, the caption was maximum clickbait. Big ups to everybody that fell for the caption clickbait, and big ups to everybody that is still here listening. But Pete, so one day I talked to my father, right? And I said, yo, pops, yo, pops. 
on some G shit. What it feel like when you smoke crack? Like what happens when you smoke? Cause I think like we we so busy pointing the finger at crackheads and saying they're wrong and saying they're fucked up, but no one has ever actually asked a crackhead. Yo, yo, pops. What was it like when you actually smoked crack? Like, what happened? Dog, he said his first time ever smoking crack. He said he put the rock in there, he lit it, and he hit it. He said nothing happened at first. Nothing. He smoked the second thing. He said when he inhaled the smoke. When he blew the smoke out, he said he felt his body come out of his mouth. His body, like the ghost, like the his whole soul came out of his mouth, dog. He said that he was standing there looking at himself with the pipe in his hand. He said he walked to his mom's house. Remind you, he looked at himself right there smoking crack and he left and walked to his mom's house. Remind you, his mom was already dead, but he walked to his mom's house. He was inside his mom's house. He was sitting there. He said he sat on the couch and he watched TV. He watched all his favorite shows as a child. And then maybe like 15 to 20 minutes later, you know, like he was like back in the car with the pipe, like right here by his face. He said he looked around and he was just tripped the fuck out. Like, wait, what the fuck just happened? What the fuck? Just happened. He said at that moment is when he realized I have to do this again. I'm not addicted, but I have to fucking leave this body again. I got to get the fuck out of here. He said he smoked crack again, dog. After he did it again, dog, he was able to fly, dog. He said he was literally flying around the world. He went to fucking, nigga, the fucking Great Wall of China. Nigga, he went every, dog, he was out of here. He was the fuck out of here, dog. He said he was out. Like, I'm talking about, he said that I was able, like, for example, you know how, when you get killed on Call of Duty and you got to stay in that, what's that mode where you could just travel the level? What's that mode called? I forgot the name of it. You know how when you get killed on Call of Duty, you got to wait to respond, so you just got to travel the level and shit? You seeing everybody else get killed? What's that shit called? He said, dog, he smoked the crack rock, dog, and he was in spectator mode, dog. He was able to fucking skim through the fucking world like that. Dog, he said, I never got addicted to crack. He said, I never got addicted to crack. It wasn't the crack. It was the simple fact that I was able to get the fuck out of here. Now, you got to think about this. Here's the double shrammy of the scenario. Not only was he able to get the fuck out of here, he said, when he came back, and when you come down from your high, 
He said when he came down from his high, he started to realize nothing in this fucking world mattered. Nothing mattered. The bills didn't matter. The, he started to he started to realize that everything here was a booby trap, like paying for bills over and over until you die. You buy a house, but you don't really buy the house because you still got to pay property taxes forever in most parts of the world. Uh, like he start, he said he started to realize this. He started to realize cell phones, TVs, all of this shit is all of a. It's all an epic booby trap started to realize it and he said that's what made me stay on the corner that's what made me stay outside i you gotta think when i was smoking crack i didn't have to pay bills i didn't have to fucking nut i didn't have to do nothing i was able to lay down on the ground and leave this fucking body right here on the ground and travel the fucking world as long as i fucking was high I was like, God damn, daddy. Shit, nigga, where the crack hit? Nigga, you got some more? Shit, nigga, where the rocks at? Nigga, I'm about to hit one of these motherfuckers right now. Shit, nigga, get the fuck out of here. But he was like, only downside of it. Nah, he was like, only downside of, of smoking crack. There's only a few downsides of smoking crack. The downside of smoking crack is that you can't stay high forever. No, he said it. He said the downside of smoking crack is that you can't stay high forever. There is no way you could permanently leave. That's the problem. You can't just permanently leave. What we got to understand is, all right, crack, crack cocaine is most definitely something that comes from the earth. People don't understand this. Pure crack cocaine comes from the earth, dog. It is something that grows in the wild. What else grows in the wild? DMT. So what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, why would the earth grow something that would make us do that? Mushrooms also. Mushrooms also. But why would the earth grow something that allows humans' minds to do that? Dog, Mother Nature is trying to tell us something. Mother Nature is trying to tell us something. This shit grows from the ground. Mother Nature is trying to tell us something. Mother Nature is trying to tell us something. You can go get DMT from the wild. You can go get DMT from the wild. Mother Nature is trying to tell us something. Mother Nature is most definitely growing these things to free us, bro. But the thing is me, I don't do drugs. I've never done drugs. My first experience with this was sensory deprivation. That was my first experience with even witnessing any of this. That was my first experience with understanding what the fuck is going on. I did sensory deprivation. And it changed my entire life. I've seen the entire world. Sensory deprivation is crack cocaine without doing crack cocaine. What we fail to realize is all of us as human beings, we most definitely have DMT inside of us. All of us. DMT, it's just something that's inside of us sitting and it can be unlocked. It's inside of all of us. So what I'm saying is, my first experience with this type of astral projection was sensory deprivation. And... 
when I realized that my brain was able to do this, this shit had me fucked up. It had me fucked up. It had me fucked up. Knowing that I was able to do this with just my mind. So I'll explain to y'all my experience with sensory deprivation. I was 17 years old. One of my friends was telling me about it. Because when, when I was 17, I was going through a lot of shit in my life. You feel me? I went up, I grew up in Wise, California. I was going through a lot of shit in my life. A lot of my friends was dying. You feel me? A lot of my friends was game banging. A lot of my friends was just doing all type of shit. So I'm like, you know what? Like, like, all right. I see a bunch of punk rocker niggas in my high school. There's a bunch of punk rocker niggas over there. But one thing about high school is high school make you hate the niggas who wear all black. Like the niggas that wear all black, high school tell you, niggas, stay away from them fucking weird ass punk rocker niggas. Them niggas weird. So one day I was like, you know what, man? I'm a fucking be a class clown nigga and I'm gonna go over there and chill with the punk rock niggas, dog. So I went over there, I'm like, what's up, dudes? Power up, dudes, what's up, dudes? Yeah. And they was just looking at me like, yo, what the fuck are you on? You weird. So I'm like, hey, man, you feel me? I'm trying to be a black punk rocker, dog. I know that y'all don't got no black niggas over here. What's up, nigga? Could I join the squad? You feel me? So they was just looking at me like, you know, because you got to think these niggas are already on their third eye bag. So they probably just like, yo, this dude is fucking weirdo. But I'm like, no, look, for real, man. Like, you know, I've been through a lot of shit in my life, man. And I, I don't know if I could do this game banging shit no more, man. I just want to enter another world. So one girl was, one girl looked, you know what it felt like? You ever seen the movie Twilight? When the vampire niggas was at school and somebody else be talking to them and shit. But like, like the whole squad know they got secret powers, but they don't really be saying nothing. So one girl was like, just let him in. You know, he might be cool. So then the main dude was like, and then he was like, all right, whatever. So boom. So one day, nigga, the dude was like, yo, we're going to this little thing after school. Like, you want to come? I'm like, yo, like, what is it? He's like, man, it's just like, you know, some stuff to just take your mind somewhere else. And I'm like, all right. Fuck it. You feel me? Like, what could happen? Nigga, I've been in drive-bys. I've been in shootouts. Nigga, I've been in, nigga, oh, I think I've been chased by a cop. Nigga, oh, nigga, fuck it. What else could happen, dog? I might as well try some other weirdo shit, nigga. What the fuck else could happen? So, bam. I go with the niggas. Boom. They show me the shit. I'm sitting there. I'm looking. I'm like, yo, what the fuck is this? Dragon Ball Z? What the fuck? This shit look like Dragon Ball. Remind you, it was like a Super Saiyan capsule in the middle of the water. Shit like a Super Saiyan capsule. I'm like, yo, what the fuck is that? Like, you niggas about to fucking go to, nigga, Namek? What the fuck? Nigga, what the fuck is this? This nigga's about to go to Namek. Nigga, shit, nigga, I'm in here. Shit, nigga, we're Piccolo. Piccolo, you in here? Yeah, nigga, somewhere. But it's like, nah, have you ever heard of sensory deprivation? I'm like, nah, what the fuck is that? You feel me? It was like, you're going to love it, right? So it's like, get in. So remind you, I'm like, you know what? These niggas about to do some torture shit. Nigga, these niggas are devil worshippers. These, these niggas about to torture me. But fuck it, nigga, I'm a real nigga for the projects. Nigga, torture me. Nigga, I'm with the shits. Nigga, my mama. Nigga, I'm in there. Right? So I got in there. You feel me? They closed the door. Shit was complete black, right? Shit. Nigga, I'm thinking it's a video game or something. I'm thinking some nigga, some nigga, I'm about to get some controllers. Nigga, you nigga about to shoot some airplanes. Nigga, I'm, nigga, it's on. Nigga, I'm with the shits. Nigga, whatever. So, boom. I'm in there. You feel me? I'm in there, dog. It's complete black, right? It's complete black. You don't hear nothing, dog. You don't hear nothing. I'm talking about, you know, we are so used to hearing so much sound every day, like just natural ambient sound, that it feels weird to hear nothing, like absolutely negative zero of nothing. Dog, you don't hear nothing. You can hear your heartbeat. You can hear the blood. You can hear the blood going down your arms. Dog, you can hear your bones cracking. Dog, you hear everything inside of your own body. You hear your breath, dog. You hear your lungs open up. You can hear this shit. So you sitting there, you like, yo, what the fuck is all this other shit, dog? This shit is crazy. 
So you know me, I'm like, nigga, oh my mama, nigga, I ain't no, nigga, I ain't weird, nigga, I don't hear no nigga heartbeat, nigga, that shit weird, nigga, oh my mama, I'm a crip, nigga, fuck you talking about heartbeat, nigga, nigga, nobody hear that shit, nigga, I'm chilling, nigga, what these niggas gonna do, nigga, shit, nigga, wait, nigga. So if you feel me, I'm, I'm in, I'm trying to fight it because my inner Watts nigga is trying to fight it. So boom, I'm chilling, you feel me, I'm chilling. Boom, some flew past the screen. I'm like, wait, what the fuck was that? Hey, let me out, dog. Y'all niggas in here playing games, dog. Let me out. What's going on? So remind you, now what happens is your adrenaline start to rise because you start to get scared. Now, when you start to get scared, your adrenaline rise. Adrenaline is a form of DMT. So when your adrenaline pops, now all the DMT stars leaking out. Everything's leaking out, right? Because now you're scared. You're like, oh, shit. When you get into panic mode, that's when you start to do some of the most godliest shit you ever done in your entire life. Panic mode. So now I'm panicking. I'm, oh, shit, nigga. So now, nigga, I'm like, all right, daylight, just relax. Just relax. Everything going to be okay. Take a deep breath. I took a deep breath. Remind you, you open your eyes, it's completely black. You close your eyes, it's completely black. So now your brain started to question, is your eyes open or is your eyes closed? You don't even know. Remind you, it is negative zero black. So now you're like, man, am I, dog, I can't see nothing, dog. You, Dog, am I really touching my, now, your mind starts to question what's real and what's not real. Now you're questioning existence. You you questioning what the am I even feeling myself? Is my fucking face even real? What the fuck is this? Then when you touch your face, you can feel the little. You gotta understand what this fingerprint is. When you know what your fingerprint is, this is the reason why they make people fingerprint. When you understand what your fingerprint is, dog, you start to feel. You know how that shit go around in a circle? When you touch yourself, you can feel the electricity go around in a circle, go inside of your arm, all the way through your arm, into your brain to process it touching yourself. You can feel the electricity. Dog, I'm in there tripping, dog. I'm like, these niggas must have fucking slipped something in my drink, like, Something ain't right. Bam. Out of nowhere, nigga, I see a little fucking paint. Like, it's like a paint splatter. Like a paint splatter. Splatter on the, like, the front in front of me. A paint splatter. Then it's like, it's just like, like, wiggling in the front of me. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Like, nigga, I'm trying to look around. I can't look around because it's completely black. So you don't even know if you turn in your head because no matter where you look, it's completely black. So you don't even know if you doing nothing, dog. You don't know what the fuck is happening. So I'm looking. The fuck is that, dog? I get closer to it. I look to the side, it's another one over there. I look to the side, it's another one. I look up, it's another one. Before you know it, colors is happening, dog. Colors. There's colors popping up everywhere. Colors, colors, colors. Then before you know it, it should just look rainbow everywhere. Like, it's fucking rainbow, like tie-dye. It just look tie-dyed everywhere. Tie-dyed. Now, I'm, I'm literally, I'm on some other shit. I'm like, yo. I'm fucked. I ain't never getting out of this shit. I am literally fucked. Boom. My mind came at peace, dog. I close. I remember closing my eyelids, and then when I opened them back up, nigga, I was in a forest. A forest. I was in a complete forest. Forest. I was there in the forest. It was peaceful, there was trees, there was grass. It was trees, it was grass, it was birds, that was it. 
that was it. I sat there for about five minutes and I'm like, yo, where the fuck am I at? What the fuck? Like, how is this possible? I'm like, yo, this shit like a video game. Like these niggas cut on the screen or something. This shit fake. Cause it felt like VR. So I'm like, yo, this shit fake. Right? So boom. I walk up and I grab the tree. And I touched the tree. And it felt like I touched the tree. I touched the tree. At the moment I touched the tree, the dude opened the door and was like, are you all right? You good? I got out of the tank. I got out of the tank. Everybody was standing there looking at me. 